For Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Woodley. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satner joins me to discuss broad unity and popular unity to rebuild democracy. Welcome, Professor. Thanks. You refer in your article to the need for building two types of politics, um, that of a broad unity and popular unity. What is the significance of this distinction? You know, a lot of people are not thinking about popular unity and they think uh, it's romantic to talk about that, but I'll come back to that. At the moment, we have uh, the possibilities of building a broad, unified movement of people who are opposed to state capture, opposed to the violence of this period, opposed to the corruption and other forms of illegality. And unlike what I would call a popular movement, which is mainly um, related to the poor, uh, the broad unity that I'm talking about is a shared anger which spreads from the wealthy to the poorest of the poor. Neither the wealthy, nor the people in the shacks, nor workers on the shop floor, nor unemployed people have an interest in corruption and malgovernance and violence. Because the people who suffer most from this are the poor, who don't get their grants, who are experience illegal violence when their housing is demolished or they're thrown into the streets or whatever it happens to be. And on the side of the more wealthy people, it doesn't help business to have to pay more under the table, table to get a contract from government, to have to divert money towards one other source. And as we are seeing in the unfolding of the Gupta leaks and the KPMG saga, it actually can uh, permanently damage business or, or have short-term very serious consequences because it actually has an implication for the entire banking system. Uh, so it's not, so these things um, that are happening mean that we have a number of people who've come into the streets who wouldn't normally be in the streets. They've come as ordinary concerned citizens from uh, their homes, from various civic and professional organizations, and they've also come from the poor. And they've come from a limited number of organizations, to some extent political parties, like the DA and the EFF, but also from new uh, civil society organizations like Save South Africa. But in the main, these have not been very well organized in the sense that the march might be well organized, but the people are not part of an ongoing uh, organizational structure. So they leave the march and they don't have a loyalty to build something. My belief is that given that we have this wellspring of anger, and this desire to see our country saved from the malgovernance that we experience, one could develop a unifying vision, a, se a document to which these people from different sectors subscribe and uh, a basis for going forward in this broad unity. But when I speak about popular unity, I am saying that uh, there are things that go beyond that which concern the poorest of the poor. And it relates to the question of um, resolving inequality where South Africa is one of the most unequal societies on earth, maybe the most unequal. And there may not be agreement on that, uh, but also these are people who may organize in the places where they live around the things that concern them. And I think one of the things we are learning from the problems of our democracy at the present is that uh, we can't rely as citizens 
simply on voting every five years. Because um, our presence to ensure that our interests are served may well hold politicians more accountable than the institutional structures that are failing. Now, I'm not saying that um, all inst members of institutional structures are messing around, but certainly uh, we had a belief in the 1980s that we needed to have the presence of the people in their own political life. So I'm arguing for a return to the notion of popular power. In the first place, in the broad unity I was referring to, it wouldn't be the same as the UDF because it would not be primarily the poor as was well the UDF, uh, but would include wealthier sections of the population. It's a resource that we must use, that people are angry, whatever class they come from. In the case of popular unity, one is, all, one is talking both of people who come from the poorest section of the population, but also people who may be prepared to get involved in things that business people may not want to. Now, much of your article refers to the crisis in the ANC, and you say that the ANC may disappear. Is this not far-fetched? Yeah, now I keep on refer returning to this because the crisis of the ANC seems to be getting worse. Um, and we have a situation in the last few days where the ANC leadership has issued a directive saying that there should be no more elective conferences before December. Because uh, if there are challenges to these, it can endanger the entire conference. In other words, between September and December, there may be some provinces or regions whose time as elected representatives has run out. And unconstitutionally, they will continue to hold office. Now that is a real commentary on the level of irregularity that they are experiencing, level of irregularity that they fear will endanger the very holding of the conference. And if they don't hold this conference, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the consequence of that? Does human remain in power? When do they hold the conference? It's possible that they will not be able to hold the conference because there's so much violence and disarray. But if it were to happen, uh, it would be the disappearance of an organization that it's lo has lost its political character. So that even if the ANC does not formally disappear, the ANC with which many of us was associated no longer exists. Now obviously things change and the same organization can't exist uh, over the time, but it has really lost the capacity to excite people. We used to be excited. I still get a bit of excitement because I was listening, I was seeing on YouTube uh, the ANC KZN, these guys have been disbanded, were singing, mm. and I was listening to it, and I was moved by it, because there's still a part of me that is moved by these things. However, I think those days could well be gone, but it's possible that it can creep on, and plod on for years, who knows. Thanks for speaking with us, Professor. That was Professor Raymond Satner speaking to Crema Media's policy about broad unity and popular unity to rebuild democracy.